This is the Gambling Gauchos. Gauchos After Dark, your weekly recap of Big 12 college football. Uh, Barnett Howard and Williams is, you can find them at bhwlawfirm.com, one of the only law firms in the state of Texas, certified for Title IX uh, litigation. They also do family law, criminal defense, catastrophic injury. So hit them up, bhwlawfirm.com, if you need them. Rob, how's it going, man? It's going good. It's uh, late. USC is winning, but maybe not. Robert, are you with us? Can you hear me? Check, check. Can you hear me? Check, 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 check. Can you hear me? Yep. I got you now. Okay. Yeah, it's doing good. I, what I said before was really good, but I guess you missed it. Um, I guess I did. What, did Utah just tie it up? Um, so I don't go. know. I just stepped outside. Did they? Yeah, I think it's 35-35. I'm at a weird angle. Oh, okay. I'm showing they're at the one, but that might be a bit of a lag. I think they just bush. Well, they might have stuffed them. Bush push? No, it's 35-35. Did I get screwed yet on uh, East Carolina and Memphis? Oh, no. Memphis won. Let's go. I was going to chalk that up to a bad beat, but uh, I guess I went cast in triple overtime. Never a Sheesh. doubt. With an automatic uh, two-point conversion? Yes. I needed... Uh, well, I had money line and plus five and a half. So once it was in triple OT, the five and a half was guaranteed. Um, okay, well, that's not what we're here to talk about, though. Um, around the Big 12, Texas Tech on a bye, which is, uh, I think, a well-timed bye week. And that also means that Gaucho's After Dark won't be 45 minutes of Donovan Smith discourse. It'll allow us to kind of take a look around the conference. Uh, do we want to go in chronological order and start – from Thursday's game, or do you want to talk TCU Oklahoma State? What do y'all, what do y'all want to take this? Yeah, let's let's get the bad game out of the way, because we can have some Texas Tech discourse there. The bad game, uh, Kansas OU. No, no, the uh, West Virginia Baylor. Oh, okay, I thought that was a good game. It was a good game, but it's the two bad teams. Oh, okay, well, um, yeah, West Virginia in the win column for the first time in Big 12 play. I think that um, moves them out of the discussion of worst team in the conference, at least for now. Does it? Um, Well, I think so. I mean, combined, we kind of had them locked in the cellar there because of the loss to Kansas, but um, a lot of teams have lost to Kansas since then. So that combined with them getting a win over Baylor, I think has to move them out of that number 10 slot for now. So who's 10? Baylor? No, I think it's Iowa State or Oklahoma, and we can have that debate, okay. and that can be what we ask anybody who chimes in. So, I mean, there's two 3-0 and teams, Kansas State and TCU, and then Iowa State is the last winless team in Big 12 play. Um, so we could ask everybody who's the top contender that isn't undefeated and who's the worst team in the conference, if y'all want to do that. Let's do who's the best team, who's the worst team. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um... Spencer, do you have an opinion on West Virginia? I I still don't think I I I don't think they're they're any better because they beat Baylor. Uh, they they were they, they took advantage of a lot of obvious like really bad turnovers and you know made good with them obviously to to put up forty three points against Baylor. But I mean they're not worse in the conference. That that to me that has to be Iowa State at zero and four. Does Baylor win that game if Shapin doesn't get hurt? Uh, I don't know because he wasn't doing so well before he went down. Uh, I mean, obviously it didn't didn't help them any. So, I mean, it's with only it being three points. I mean, I would say they probably do, but I don't know. I mean, he was averaging something like fifteen yards per per attempt before he went down. So. I mean, Shapin didn't get the two point conversion blocked. Yeah, but I mean, they also had a really bad turnover in the red zone with the backup quarterback. That I wonder would things have been different had Shapin played the last because he got hurt. Was Did it the on the backup very quarterback first drive throw the ball on the ground <laughs> early in the game? Do what? Shapin just threw the no, ball on the ground. Yours, guys. 
Uh, the scoop what does that have score. to do with the, the second half collapse, score. though? Well, yeah, I just but what think that, it, the, the, he could have done it again is all I'm saying. Okay, but they had the lead when he left. Sure, and then sure. I think it's a fair consideration. Certainly, certainly. And I, I think, you know, what if West Virginia had Donovan Smith? Would they have beaten him by more or, or less? What? <laughs> I just we, You said you didn't want any Donovan Smith uh, discourse off the top, so I'm just messing with you. Oh geez, yeah, here uh, we go. No, I think I think Blake Shapin certainly makes a difference if he's there the whole time. And again, whenever a player gets hurt, especially a starter, especially a guy who's a leader on the team, there's always a, a vibe change at the very least. So, yeah, I think it made a difference for sure. Because had had Shapin stayed in that game and West Virginia lost, as bad as their defense looked, then I think that they're still very solidly in the worst team in the conference discussion. But they just kind of moved out of that for me automatically by securing the win, even if it did come against a backup quarterback in the second half. I guess my response to that is, is Iowa State's defense a top four in the conference? I mean, nobody stopped Kansas like they have. And they made, I mean, Texas and Quinn Ewers just scored 49 on Oklahoma. I know a lot of people have, but then you move forward and they're, they look good against Texas. I, I don't know. Is, is Iowa State's defense good enough to have them not squarely at the bottom? Well, you, you can have one of the best sides and not be the, the, the best team, right? Like you, you can have the number one offense and not be the best team in the conference. And I don't think having the best defense keeps them from being last in the Big 12 because they are three and four and, and winless in the conference right now. They're also, so I mean, the flip side of that shape and injury in Morgantown, if Texas gets called for targeting on that last Iowa State drive and Iowa State isn't the final winless team in the conference and they have a road win in Austin, are we, are they even in the discussion for worst team in the Big 12? I mean, somebody has to be in the discussion. So uh, I think they would be down there with a, a losing record in conference play. But you know who else has a losing record in conference play? Who's that? Well, I mean Texas Tech, but I wouldn't put them in the I wouldn't put them in the bottom tier. I don't think. Yeah, I mean you get to play West Virginia and Baylor in the next two games, and for what it's worth, those three plus Iowa State might be the four worst teams in the conference. I mean somebody has to be. Hey Michael, what's up? Hey, fellas. I, I'm trying to figure out Iowa State, too. I, they still have Oklahoma State to play. They still have TCU to play. They've got OU coming up next Thursday, so they've got a bye week. But, I mean, yeah, that defense is obviously legit. I mean, let's not compare it too closely to Iowa because the offensive powerhouse of Iowa leaves a lot to be desired. But, yeah, just seeing what they were able to put together in Austin makes me a little more nervous about text trip to Ames. But right now, yeah, they're the worst team in the Big 12. I, I think so too. and I, I think that's just in the conference, in conference games, you have to be able to score to win. Um, they had opportunities today, and Deckers just is not a playmaker, in my opinion. Um, I think Ewers came back down to earth a little bit. I think Max Duggan is probably the best quarterback in the conference right now. And, and I don't really know that that's – controversial anymore you'd put him above sanders i mean you out dueled him today one-on-one -on -one and looked better uh, i mean he didn't have a terrible underthrow that led to an interception late in the game spencer sanders did and i i'm i was the one this whole season saying well you take the first four years of max duggan he can't just automatically be good but <laughs> i mean <laughs> mad max man He's gotten I, I I think he's got good guys to throw to. I think Quentin Johnson, if it wasn't for Xavier Worthy, might be the best wide receiver in the Big Twelve. Um, and they've got several other guys who can I mean, they're athletic is an offense. So I'm prepared to is say that take? I'm prepared to say that TCU is the best offense in the conference. Is it a hot take to say that Kansas is still the worst team in the Big Twelve? Like, are we over that Cinderella storyline yet? And can we acknowledge that they got away with one against Iowa State? Their other Big 12 win, West Virginia, was in overtime against a team coming off a big rivalry loss. And 
moving forward, they would be an underdog to anybody in the conference in a neutral side. Yeah, some of us never got on that Cinderella story. So, yes, I'm prepared to be off of that. Oh, I, mean, I, was, I was all about the glass slipper until Daniel got hurt. But, but yeah, it, it's kind of worn off a little bit. I think it's it's about midnight with being taken over. Well, because when they were 2-0 and in conference play, there was no way you could list them as the worst team in the conference. But moving forward, I mean, we said this when they got to 5-0, and that they would be dogs in their last seven, and they might have to, like, really scratch and claw just to be bowl eligible. So it was fun while it lasted, but I think when game day was there, that was kind of like the beginning of the end. And I think you've seen it the last couple of weeks with the loss to TCU, the loss to OU. I think it's going to continue trending that way. And we can have the discussion about other teams, but I, I think at the end of the season we'll be like, yeah, Kansas is still the worst team in the Big 12, no. in my opinion. I certainly don't think that's – certainly don't. Okay, we got one of our listeners in the queue. Alan, uh, what do you got for us? What's up, gents? How you Not doing? much, man. Living life. How are you? Doing well. I think, as far as worst and best, I'll just chime in real quick here. I still think that West Virginia overall is not very impressive. I, I think they got a, a lot of breaks on Thursday night. And with uh, Baylor's QB going out, I think that was big. They gave up a lot of big plays. And there's something about them that just doesn't – I think Morgantown, as we know, is, is a tough place to play. I think they'll come down to reality a little bit as we go on here for the season. But – um I just don't trust them. I think they're still probably the worst overall. Um, and as far as the best team right now, it's hard to argue TCU, but as far as a 1B, um, there's something about K-State's defense that stands out. And I think it's going to be a very interesting Saturday next next week in Fort Worth. So we'll see, but I don't know. I, I think it's 1A, 1B for sure for TCU and Kansas State, obviously. But – um, it, it's hard for me to put West Virginia at anything more than they, they, they're. I think they're clearly still the worst. I think they they had a good win at home, but I think they're going to show their true colors in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, good thoughts. And I mean, West Virginia's defense was still dreadful in that game, and they yeah. tried to give it away like that. JT, or excuse me, yeah. JT, yeah. JT Daniels. Sorry, man. There's so many J Daniels in college football right now. I have to right. like check myself. Right. Um, with that JT Daniels pick late in the game, I was like, wow, they really just blew it. And then, you know, they get it right back. So, yeah, I still think at the end of the season, we it could be West Virginia. I think right now, if you're taking like a weekly snapshot, you have to give them some respect for, for beating Baylor, who, you know, we all thought was at least a middle of the pack type team in the conference before this week. So for sure. But but I think especially their pass defense looks so bad. I'm hopeful that if the offensive line for Texas Tech can hold up on Saturday, a week from today, um, whoever's playing quarterback, whether it's Shuck, Morton, or Donovan, should have a field day. And so I'm I'm looking forward to that. Agreed. Um, we have an Iowa State fan uh, who. Uh, it's actually the real T.J. Otzelberger, so that's pretty cool. Welcome, Coach Otzelberger. Uh, what do you got for us? Who's the best team in the Big 12? Who's the worst team in the Big 12? Oh, this is not the real T.J. Otzelberger. But uh, I was just going to ask you guys about, you know, I figured everybody watched the Iowa State-Texas game today. I uh, want to hear your thoughts on the final drive. I must have, I'm sure you talked about it already, but I just want to hear what your thoughts were on that final drive. Uh, I'll go first. Uh, I every time I'm watching football, there's a call that generally I say that is not targeting. It's just football, and, and I say it all the time. And then something happens, and it's Texas hitting the guy, and I like do I want that to be targeting so bad? But every time I'm watching football and I'm not involved, I say that is not targeting. It's just football. We used to do that every single game. So uh, I think it, obviously. Uh, juxtaposed to the awkward fall on Quinn Ewers earlier in the game that was called roughing the passer, and then you don't call that targeting, and then you don't reverse the fumble even though it looked like his knee was down. Um, 
I can understand why an Iowa State fan would be upset. I would be upset if I was a Texas Tech fan in that situation. But to me, it wasn't targeting, and I wish they would go with that more often and not kind of the crazy targeting calls we get so often. Come on, Rob. You have to go right after him. It was Texas. Of course, it was a blown call. Let's go. I mean, a lot of people will say that. Yes, I, I, I agree with that sentiment that I wish Texas would have been screwed. But to me, I'm watching football often, and I'm always yelling at the TV, that's not targeting, it's football. We're ruining the game we love. So I have to be consistent there. Yeah, and Rob says it exactly like that, too, if you ever watch football with him. He uses that exact voice. I, I mean, so I think part of the problem is four or five of us We'll share our views on it and there'll be no consensus, which when a rule is that subjective, you know, it's not like inbounds, out of bounds, offsides. Um, There are a lot of targeting calls where I just think, yeah, these guys are playing football. They happen to hit heads and that doesn't mean that anything malicious happened. But on that one, I mean, it, it looked like a player seeking the head and neck area and whether the actual collision was shoulder to shoulder. I don't know for sure. I mean, a lot of people seemed very definitive on the, camera angle that they showed and i think he might have hit him in the helmet it might have been shoulder pad i i don't know um but yeah i mean at first glance when i saw it live i thought it was targeting and so i know that the officials have a tough job and then when you see it from eight different angles and slow-mo that might change things but when i saw it live i thought they should call targeting on that and i didn't see anything in the review that had they called targeting on the field would have overturned it obviously they didn't see it that way but i i thought a targeting flag should be called but on the fumble component, I do think the ball was moving before his knee was down. So if they ruled there's no targeting, I think it was the correct call that it was a fumble on that play. Oh, yeah, I agree with the uh, – the ball is definitely out before he was down. But I was just going to say, you know, what is it going to take for, you know, you know, officials, you know, you get the best in the SEC and the Big Ten, and then you, there's a huge drop-off as soon as you get to the Big 12 with when it comes to officiating. So – you know, Iowa State's been on the wrong end of a lot of targeting calls. You know, this year, you know, the Big 12 championship game in 2020, uh, you know, it's been, I mean, Iowa State's kind of been on the wrong side of a lot of those, but it goes down from, you know, the officiating. And I think officials are worried about being graded, you know, after every game. Is uh, What are your thoughts on that? I think that we as Big 12 fans see a lot of the issues in Big 12 officiating because we watch Big 12 more than everything else. Uh, all officials suck. Maybe not all particularly individually, but all crews have problems, and every single conference would say that their officials are the worst. So I think that they should make all officials full-time. I think they should take a lot of the subjective calls out of the game or make them objective. Um, Contact above the head. Targeting. Simple as that. You don't need to say, was there intent? Was it malicious? Um, Was the crown down? Was the angle right? Did they change levels? No. Contact? Yes. No. Targeting. I think that would help a lot. Should they they make it like the NFL where it's not an ejection, it's just 15 yards? I think there's a lot of things they could do, man. I think you could say uh, first one's a penalty, second one's a a throwout. Um, It's a personal foul. If there is, because again, if there's intent, you're throwing them out. If there's not, there you're not. I, I don't think they should miss time the next game if it's in the second half, but I don't know. I think there's a lot of issues with the targeting call, but it is what it is at this point. And I, I think as Texas Tech fans, we know that. Um, I believe against Iowa State a few years ago, there was a an awful targeting call against one of our linebackers that uh, – Ruin the game for us, so we're all familiar with it in the Big 12, I think. You know, I, I would love to see, like we get with the MLB, some kind of transparency on, on the grading. Um, you know, you would think with, with MLB, with the union, that they'd have some kind of protection there, and they don't. All their scores and post-game evaluations are made public. I, I'd love to see that kind of evaluation opened up, like, hey, man, like you think it's bad. It's actually not as bad as you think it is, or – you know, this crew is actually really, really bad, and we need to find somewhere else for them to be working. I'll climb back on my soapbox about targeting. There should be targeting one and targeting two, one for really egregious, malicious hits that are worthy of an ejection and suspension, and then one for just kind of 
the kind of hit that you don't want in the game, but doesn't have malicious intent. And I think maybe that's what they could have called today. It was like a, if they do make a major violation, a minor violation, they could have called a minor violation on that play. And, you know, it doesn't, doesn't totally alter the course of the game in terms of an ejection and a 15 yard penalty, things like that. It doesn't impact the next game when the guy sits out the first half, but it does maybe allow Iowa state to retain possession of the ball. Um, so I've, I've been a long time proponent of that on targeting because anytime they call it right now, you know, it's an ejection. The guy misses the first half of the next game. If the fouls in the second half and it's just, it's always a super consequential call. And I wish there was some room for like when it's a gray area and when half the people think it's targeting, half the people don't, they can call kind of a minor violation. That's less of a game altering decision, but still sort of acknowledges that the hit wasn't totally clean. We're going to have a, a, a judge now we're gonna have like a pulse the people there in the middle of the game should we throw this guy out and then base it on the people no but i mean we're, we're past the point of all calls being objective only i mean there's obviously um there's judgment on intent in other sports and so i think you can if we're already this far gone in the game of football then we can rein in how consequential some of the targeting calls are by adding that targeting one and targeting two i do agree with that and i've I like that, and I like uh, relegation with officials. I just don't know how you would. Well, and I kind of like. I liked the uh, the appeal idea. I mean, I think it's a mess that they have to deal with during the bye week, and you know, it's not something that we have to deal with or anything. But if if why can't they do that during the game? I mean, I think that if if you're going to open up the door to well, let's appeal that and actually get that targeting call turned back, that way we can have our player next week. Open it up during the game. There's so much time during the game, and there's so many people reviewing this stuff. I don't know why a player can't just jog right back out in the fourth quarter. Like, oh, yeah, by the way, that wasn't targeting. Um, maybe you get the ball at the 35 on the next kickoff or something. I don't know. But if, if you're opening up that can of worms, you might as well just open it up during the actual game itself. It's taken 47 months to clear Kansas and, and go back through all this stuff with the Kansas basketball program. You think they're going to, the NCAA you're talking about is going to figure out an appeal within two hours. I mean, that, that would be impressive. Oh, sure. That would be impressive. Yeah. Well, because uh, that's the, all that's this the paperwork they have to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they'll, they'll fax it right in. Okay. They've all got all the oh, fax, fax numbers. Well, yeah, I just had forgotten about the fax machines. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> so, no, Rob, they have a dedicated fax machine. Okay. And it, is, all right. it is solely – it is the targeting fax machine. It's, Good. It's there, man. Well, then I'm in. I don't I mean, even sometimes know. you get a busy signal, but if you don't get the busy signal, then you're fine. You're good. I don't even understand the appeal on targeting because they already stopped the game for five or ten minutes to review it. So, like, are they just – are they looking at that camera angle – 50 more times on the appeal like you've already seen the play from every angle um at half speed i don't wonder like if we're going to appeal it later then why stop the game for 45 minutes of combined reviews in the middle of the game while they're oh, yeah. on their ipad mini right right well yeah. they're you know they're in the sun there's adrenaline <laughs> you know they didn't have their their good contacts in you know they're 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 far-sighted not nearsighted. So it's, yeah, it just depends. So I, I think that's, it's just such a can of worms to open anyway. And so I just feel like just make it worse. Just make it harder <laughs> on them. Make yeah. it to where they just, all right, well, okay, halftime. We're going to have, instead of everyone getting a peanut butter sandwich, all the refs are going to sit and watch the targeting tape and make sure that they got it right. And then if not, then, you know, instead of uh, Iowa State, kicking off they're going to receive the ball in the second half or something just let's just make it crazy i guess one of my last question is like is is iowa state the worst team in the big 12 now i guess we've lost all four games by a combined 14 points and i just i don't know you know i, I was really hoping we we really could have used the bye week this week but it didn't happen but is iowa state really the worst team in the big 12 now let me ask you this. If if Iowa State's not the worst team, who would you put in the bottom tier? Give me three teams that Iowa State would be with, two or two teams that Iowa State would be with at the bottom. Well, I, I think one's obviously West Virginia. I mean, I, I still think that was a little bit of a fluke on Thursday night. I mean, West Virginia's good, but they're not, I think Baylor's still better than them. And then I would say 
it's, it's probably got to be Kansas. I don't think Kansas is going to win another game the rest of the season. I think, you know, Iowa State should have won that game, but, you know, special teams are not very good at that. But I still think it's got to be Kansas. I agree. Hey, uh, thanks for joining us, TJ, and uh, good luck at the basketball season. Hey, thank you, guys. Hey, all I always say that Texas Tech fans are the best fans and the second-best fans in the Big 12. With the best bridge. Appreciate it. Would love to hear it. Yeah, the bridge. <laughs> um, Mr. Root, I think you're next, man. What's up? With my Dixieland Spend my dollars Well, I, I know I that might have uh, broken up your very in-depth discussion on targeting, but how about that scene after the Tennessee-Alabama game? That was something else, man. They carried the goalposts out of the stadium to the Into bar. Into the river. <laughs> it's beautiful, man. <laughs> just incredible. Just, it's nice. just an incredible scene. It's nice to see a program like Tennessee notch a win like that. Yeah, you know. 24 years. It's been 15 years or however the hell long it's been. Uh, you know, act like you've been there before. You're rushing the field, <laughs> beating a top 10 team. Give me a break. Come on. <laughs> no, that was a crazy game, though. And I uh, I said this in our Discord server, which if you want to join that, patreon.com slash gambling gauchos. The world is not ready for three one-loss SEC teams in the playoff, but that's where this is headed. So Tennessee is going to lose to Georgia in the regular season. They'll be 11-1 and one sitting at home on SEC Championship weekend. Undefeated Georgia versus one loss Alabama from the West. Alabama's going to beat Georgia. The committee will have no choice but to put Alabama, Georgia, and Tennessee at 12-1, and 12-1, and 11-1. and one, all With Ohio State. Player. With Ohio State. Oh, my God, yeah. it's going to be brutal. Or a two-loss Texas would yeah. be even funnier. I, I cannot wait to see that uh, playoff. No, it, it has no, to be. I, it, that's exactly three. what I want to see. Three SEC teams and two lost Texas, or we riot. That is the ultimate chaotic playoff, and it needs to happen. Well, that's four SEC teams. I mean, you know it's going to happen. Oh, gosh. Yeah, imagine if uh, Texas had Quinn Ewers when they were playing us. You know, we didn't have our, we weren't playing our backup quarterback at all. Well, the starter didn't start until Stillwater, so. Uh, people are saying. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you saw you saw how Texas handled little old Iowa State in Austin today with Quinn Ewers. So, and he, I mean, hey, he's a good quarterback. But Did you see like him throw York backwards State? into the into the ground like Brock Purdy? Sorry, that was a ricochet yeah. shot. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry, Brock Purdy. This is a pro Brock Purdy podcast. Is Brock I, in the chat? I think he's. I think I saw him. <laughs> um. I, I, wanna... I will say Iowa State did get hosed on that fumble call. It, it looked like that guy was down. It wouldn't be an Iowa State Texas game if there wasn't some crazy officiating shenanigans at the end of it. That it just true. seems like it always comes down to that. Yeah, very on brand for an Iowa State UT game. Yes, absolutely. Oh, let's talk OU for a minute. We because we talked Kansas. I think the consensus is that nobody here was fully bought in on five and zero. Um, Oklahoma, they get off the snide. They win. Not a terribly impressive win. I mean, like you're supposed to beat Kansas and Norman, and their defense still looks dreadful. Is it a fair comp to say that they're like 2015, 2016 Texas Tech, and that they might go six and six, seven and five? But if they're going to win games, it has to be 45 to 41. Yeah, what's crazy is Kansas is 2013 Texas Tech, and Oklahoma is 2015 Texas, or 20. Let's say 2017. Because, I mean, Gabriel's not Patrick Mahomes, but uh, it's just it's wild how you're going to have Kansas, who is so good offensively and just dog meat defensively, and then Oklahoma. It's like Texas Tech was scrimmaging itself today from the past. It was incredible, and it hurt. Yeah, I don't know if I was in a coma or something, but I don't remember. I did not remember that TCU put 55 on them. But uh, yeah, they sure did. So that that feels that feels familiar. This, of course, might shift after today's games, but according to ESPN FPI, which is usually pretty close to the Vegas lines, uh, today was the last game on Oklahoma's schedule that they were 
going to be favored to win. Now, there are a lot of really close toss-up games where, you know, like I'm looking at Texas Tech OU, it gives FPI gives OU a 47% chance to win that game. So, I mean, that's still basically a coin flip. But even when they host Baylor, like as of today, it says OU has a 46% chance to win that game in Norman, um, only a 41% chance to win in Ames after the bye. So, you know, I think the rest of their games are winnable. The rest of their games are losable. And, you know, they're four and three. I think they'll make a bowl game. But I I think seven and five is probably their ceiling. They're more likely to make a bowl game than Kansas is to make a bowl game. Um, hey, Kyle, we did this on the uh, tailgate show today. What's your final Texas Tech record? Um, and then... Also, we haven't given like top three teams in the Big 12 yet, so let's all do that too. And I would say, well, I'm not going to say mine yet. So Kyle and uh, Mr. Root, if you want to, um, final Texas Tech schedule and maybe the top three in the Big 12. I'll say Texas Tech finishes the regular season six and six. And are you asking for my top three in the Big 12 currently or who yeah, finished top three? Current, well, uh, either way. Um, I think right now, uh, I've got to give due respect to TCU and Kansas state as the two unbeatens. And then it's really a toss up between Texas and Oklahoma state. I think the winner of that game will have a very real shot at making it to Arlington. Give me, give me Texas because I think Oklahoma state's defense is suspect. If you go back to their opener, and even at times against Arizona State, um, Texas Tech, TCU have all managed to move the ball pretty well against them. And I don't know if that's going to, don't know if their defense is going to hold up well enough for them to get to Arlington. So I'm kind of um, wiggling out of answering your question. I'll I'll say Texas and Oklahoma State are tied for third. Gotcha. Well, you can give me four. Um, can I put you on the? Yeah, can I put you on the pegs at uh, six and six? You losing both the road games, or you losing two at home? Um, well, you didn't ask for that much precision. Okay. I just okay. think that the odds are you'll win three. I think that's most oh, likely. Oh, you're just being a math guy. We, yeah. uh, we, I think we all said seven and five, but with different wins this morning. So, I mean, how many, how many of the final six are you going to be favored in? Uh, four at least. Really? West Virginia? Yes or no? Yes. Baylor? Probably won't be favored against Baylor, but they lost today or this week. Baylor yeah, might be a see that when that happens. It'll be close. I think it'll be within three either way. Okay. Uh, Kansas? Uh, yes. Uh, Oklahoma? No. Well, in, in Ames? No. Okay, maybe not names, but what if they lose three more times? Maybe, but I still don't think you're going to get that much respect on the road. Unless you you know rip off four in a row right before that, right now I but you're not going to be favored. You're not going to be favored no. in Fort Worth, sure. No, you're not going to be. I think so there's I think potential there's you can be favored. In. Yeah, two you're favored. Two I'm pretty certain you're not, and then two that'll be pretty close to toss ups. So, okay, three and three. Because you're also. Tech fans are just not even considering the possibility that you might lose to West Virginia in Lubbock. And you have like a 60% chance of winning that game, which is great. You'll be favored. But things that happen 40% of the time do happen. Um, and then you just like, I feel like Sex Panther just, quotes at me now? No, we're just like chalking that up. Like, oh, well, like we're gasoline. at the next two. Like we're just used to reeling off consecutive Big 12 wins all the time around here. I mean, I'll believe it when I see it, but yeah, I, th I think three wins the rest of the way is most likely. Yeah, I can agree with Kyle. I could see us winning the next two in Kansas and then maybe Iowa State, but that's going to be – I would hammer the under on that game. But it also looks like uh, Utah's going to beat USC if y'all are watching that game right now. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, there's a flag. Oh, maybe, 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 maybe not. I don't know. But very entertaining at the last 30 seconds of this game. Did, uh, 
did Utah go for two? Is that how they wound up with 43? Yeah. Ballsy, man. Kyle yeah. Whittingham. I wish more coaches would do that. Yeah. I like uh, Cam Rising's Wes Welker's Broncos helmet. Cam Rising's Wes Welker's Broncos helmet. Does it look like yeah, a little kid know, in it? Yeah, you know, the one that looks like it's three. It looks like a, a bobblehead. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's like as wide as the shoulder pads. We just had USC plus three and a half, so we're fine. <laughs> yeah, I also uh, wish more teams would, would play for well, the cover. Either that or you'll uh, end, up, end up on uh, bad beats on Monday. Hey, how about uh, are my you, series? Are you jinxing a at, pick six at us? At six and oh. Ooh, that that would be very entertaining. So maybe. What did you say about um, six and zero, oh, Kyle? My Syracuse Orange are six and zero. Oh. oh, Alan Raider, did you have? Uh, did you want to chime in on what we're talking about with the uh, yeah. final record? So, not to change subjects, but I am. But just elephant in the room question: There's no question. Morton starts Saturday, right? Has to. I mean, there's always a question. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think he'll start. I, mean, I think just, he'll start against West Virginia. Yes. I just I don't see any reason why he would not. So I just throwing that out, not to change subjects, but I guess I am. But anyway, well, I'll I'll well, meet myself here and let y'all discuss it. Okay. What 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 did you say this morning, Spencer, on uh, the reasoning Joey could use? Well, well, I, I said I think the only way that he could defend it was that. Uh, you don't you don't lose your, your job to injury. So Shuck, if healthy, would by default slide back in. Um, but I also came down and said, I don't see how you could ever defend going anywhere else besides Morton because I think his performance on Saturday really put, put them in a tough spot. Like maybe you didn't want him to play that well, and he did while healthy. Like, well, crap. Now, like, what what are we supposed to do now if we get – two guys healthy at the same time. That would be crazy for us. We're playing them both. To have two healthy quarterbacks. Yeah, no kidding. (laughs) Root, Root, did he throw a pick? Almost. I swear to God, Root, if you jinx this for me, you mush. (laughs) You mush. Uh, You have 23 seconds left. Oh, my God. Something uh, obnoxious could happen. You and Kyle are both mushes. you mushed all my baseball picks, I'll, and now you're mushing my USC pick. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I turned on the freaking – oh, that was pass interference. Yep. Damn. I turned on the Astros game for 30 seconds, and they hit the home run. And then I turned it off. So <laughs> I guess I'm just bad luck for Astros haters and over under USC betters right now. I had, uh, yeah. I had the, the Astros plus one and a half, so we're fine. I got caught celebrating that uh, game one win for my Mariners a little bit early. Mm. I'll, I'll take responsibility on that. Oh. Speaking of your uh, hashtag, your Syracuse Orange, how long has Dino Babers been there? Like 10 years? It feels like he's been there forever. I think he's on like year six, year seven. It feels a lot longer than that. But maybe that's just like time moves slower in the ace. Well, yeah, and he's below 500, which is yeah. It's people can't want him anywhere, fired. It's hard to be anywhere that long and below 500 because you'll either get fired or if you're better than 500, you would take a different job than Syracuse. But like he beat Clemson one year, and I think they went six and six, and then that one year he uh, they were preseason top 25 and beat Liberty when Hugh Freeze was coaching from a hospital bed. Yes, and then, uh, that that picture is incredible. Epic. And then they disappeared, and then they come back this year and they start six and zero for the first time since nineteen eighty seven. Somebody so, has to beat Clemson to make your SEC playoff work. Uh, it, it, is Jim Brown back? Maybe. <laughs> Donovan McNabb is not walking through that door. Um, <laughs> back on the quarterback discussion, I would give my take, but it upset some people last time, so I'll lay low. I've 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 said my piece there, and I'll I'll leave it at that. Hey, I'm. Well, uh, but before go ahead. We, we get off the, 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 the quarterback, sorry, can we go back to USC Utah for a second? That, that pass interference or whatever it was where Utah had the interception that returned it. So they, they flagged them for, for, for pass interference. Wouldn't they put the time back on the clock that they, that Utah ran off on that return? Very good that, point. They're like hosing USC by like 10 seconds here. 
Spencer, know. these are Pac-12 refs. You need to remember uh, they're, that. They're the worst. Anyways, um, all right. So, quarterback. Are are, are we, we talking about like how how everybody's going to riot if Shuck starts or randomly like Donovan Smith takes the field first play for West Virginia or what? That was what I was going to ask. I was going to pose that question if. If Shuck trots out there, are, are people just going to throw their headsets, their invisible headsets, while watching, or are they just going to go, okay, all right, let's let's see what happens? Or, I, I mean, I don't know if I have that strong of an opinion. I, I I'm agreeing with you guys as well as Morton played. I don't see why he wouldn't just start. But if they trot Shuck out there, I mean, the main thing I'm going to be worried about is if if he's healthy enough to play. You know what absolutely needs to happen. They need to run the uh, three quarterback formation on the first play, and uh, that way Joey can say that all three of them started. And then, then there's no discussion to be had on why did so and so start. And then I don't know who will play downs number two through eighty five, but just throw all three of them out there on play one and say that all three started. It's a slow game, only eighty five plays. That was a joke. What's up, Carson? I was just gonna say though reset the game clock which doesn't make any sense to answer the question earlier the time on a clock say you intercept it during the game early time doesn't get put back on the clock so usc getting time added back onto the clock is a big deal right here just to answer that question that was earlier you have to finish that with your official official carson robinson yeah there you go finish that with the the gaucho's official official there you go um okay <laughs> Carson, what does Texas Tech finish uh, rank wise? Who's the best team? Who's the worst team in the Big Twelve? Um, hold on, I'm trying to make sure Caleb Williams gets sacked here. Um, I, finish wise, man, I I think seven and five, and the worst team in the Big Twelve is Iowa State. The best team in the Big Twelve. Right now, it looks like TCU, and I hate to say that, which is it and it's crazy to say it. Yeah, it hurts to say it, but today, I mean, they kind of proved it today. It helped them, I think, that they played at home. But um, other than Oklahoma State losing there, I don't know that TCU – TCU has a pretty favorable, favorable schedule down the stretch. If they can get by a couple tough ones here um, – yeah, I, right now, TCU, Sunny Dykes, what was supposed to be a rebuild, looks like a pretty daggum good season, and I, it, it hurts me and pains me to say that. Did they say on the broadcast today they brought in 14 transfers? Because I'm pretty sure they were 14 on 14, and all of them are good. Yeah, they all play. Yeah, 14, 14 or 13 transfers, and they all play, and they all make big impacts for TCU, and Max Duggan has actually gotten better this year, which I didn't think he could get better. And uh, he's gotten a lot better this year. And he played really good down the stretch today. And that's why they got to win. I can't be the only one hoping that Sonny Dykes is doing his best 2013 Cliff Kingsbury impression right now. And it's just all going to come crashing down by the end very, of the year. Very good point. Yep. Or that's one can hope. Or Sonny Dykes' best SMU over the last three years impression where they – Storm out to seven and one or whatever, and then finish eight and four. Yeah. Um, do y'all want to look ahead and guess some Big Twelve opening lines before they get posted tomorrow morning? Let's do it. Okay, uh, we'll start with Texas Tech West Virginia. That game is in Lubbock. What do y'all think the opening line will be? Seven and a half. Yeah, I was gonna what? say seven and a half to Tech. What? A touchdown. Yeah. I would I would think more like four and a half, and it's going to wind up at three. I'm, I'll say Tech minus three and a half. I think Tech seven and a half is where it opens. I really do, because it's in Lubbock. Tech's played really well at home this year um, for the most part. You know, a couple of overtime wins, that's big. And I think that Vegas might be big on the right arm of Baron Morton a little bit. I don't know. He looked good against Oklahoma State um, for the most part, and – I I think they'll they'll give Tech seven in a, in a hook. There is no way I would lay seven and a half. If it's I'm that, not saying I'd lay it on it, but I, I think Vegas might give them seven and a hook. Oh. Utah won. Dang it! 
Um, now, that's yeah, a big-time win for me, boys. Yeah. So, do you want to hear a crazy stat? Their tight end had 16 receptions for 234 yards. Good Lord. <laughs> and one touchdown. Um, Spencer, did you give us an opening line for Tech West Virginia? I was going to go more along the lines of what Mike was saying, probably the four, four and a half range. Okay, I guess I'm on the low end at three and a half. All right, we'll see. Um, 11 a.m. kickoff in Waco, Kansas versus Baylor. Give me Baylor minus eight. Baylor minus eight. I was going to say Baylor minus four and a half. <laughs> yeah, I'll go five and a half. Yeah, five uh, and a half. I don't know what I'm talking about, but give me ten. I'll go six and a half to be different. Ah, come on. One dollar, Bob. <laughs> Michael's just built different. Uh, I think it'll be in the neighborhood of a touchdown, and I think it'll be a little bit more than that in Baylor's favor. Um, what is the next game? Da, da, da. Oh, big one. Texas goes to Stillwater to face Oklahoma State. Um, I didn't realize this game was next weekend when I was talking about them being tied for third on my Big 12 power rankings. Um, give me Texas minus two and a half. You yeah, I that, think that I think what Quinn, I was going to say. I, yeah, I think Quinn Ewers yeah. is uh, slowly but surely making Texas one of the top two teams in the in the conference, maybe the third best team right now in the conference. But uh, man, yeah, two and a half Texas at it in Stillwater. That's a toughie, but uh, I'd have to take him with Quinn Ewers. He he looks really good right now. Yeah, that sounds about right. And Utah's rushing the field. Act like you've been there before. Oh boy, yeah. Okay, we gotta we gotta pounce on that. It's top ten team, right? How many Oklahoma yeah, fans? USC. How many Oklahoma fans right now are praising beating Kansas in a shootout and Lincoln and Riley T- losing? T-B-O-W loss. Yeah. Tough day for Mule Shoes Finest. Funny. And gave, up go 40, to gave up forty two to Kansas, but they're really happy today. I'll take a flat three from Texas. Flat three? I was just following up to see if everybody got their uh, prediction in on that one. So w- would I be the only one that would take Oklahoma State there as a, yeah. as a home favorite? I'll, yeah, I'll, you, take, I'll take Oklahoma State as well. In that. I'm, not, I'm not saying they wouldn't cover as home dogs, but I don't think they will open as home favorites. We'll see. What's the, uh, is that the last game? Is there another one? Well, no, I was just Spencer. Are you saying that you, you think they will be favored, Oklahoma State? Yeah, and and it, it may be like two, two, two two and a half points or something real small like that. But I I, I would think top ten ish home team would would get a little more uh, respect there. Okay. Um, the last game, uh, yeah, man, another good slate next weekend for the Big Twelve. Um, Kansas State they're ranked seventeenth now. This will probably be a top fifteen matchup by next weekend. Kansas State goes to Fort Worth to play TCU. Uh, the last unbeaten teams in conference play. Give me TCU minus six and a half. That's about what what I would have said too. TCU in about a touchdown. Six and a half. Yeah, see, this one, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to have to look up what Spencer Sanders did on the ground today just to see what I feel like uh, Martinez can do. This totals going to be anybody, anybody have it off the top of their head? Let's see. What he did on the ground? I actually have that. Yeah, what Sanders did on the ground today at TCU. This will make a, a big deal in how I feel about this one. Uh, he ran for another two touchdowns. Yeah, okay. Oof, yeah, I I was going to say TCU minus three and a half, maybe two and a half. I, I'm taking K-State if it's if it's that way. I mean, I'm taking K-State to win the game. But yeah, I think ran, the line will start. Sorry, he ran 11 times, 68 yards, and two touchdowns. Yeah, I love it. Give me K-State for the win, but it'll probably start at three and a half to TCU. 
four and a half, somewhere in there. I'm yeah. going a little higher on TCU uh, because Kansas State, I'm just not <sighs> – I'm I'm not sure I'm that impressed with what they've put together yet. Because yes, they beat Oklahoma, but Oklahoma is kind of a question mark. They lost to Tulane at home, putting up ten points. They squeaked, squeaked out of a win at Ames ten to nine. So I'm not really sure who Kansas State is. I I, I think that um I would I would expect TCU to open at like minus seven and a half. And then people will, you know, get that line a little bit closer. But um, that, that's kind of where I'm at. I don't – I'm not sure where they are, and I'm not an odds maker, but that's where I would put it. What did I Oklahoma think, State close I mean, at? Um, plus four today. Against TCU? Yeah. So I'll go, I'll go five and a half. I think TCU open minus five and a half. I think our main man, Bob Trolls, be friend of the show – Hopped on right as Michael was disrespecting the cats bigly. Um, Bob Trollsby, what, what do you have to say for yourself and Emaw Nation? All I have to say is we beat an Oklahoma team that had Dylan Gabriel on it starting and playing the entire game. That hasn't been the case for the last three games for the Sooners. So, you know what? Go cats. Yeah, he played today against Kansas, put up 50. 50- Two. Yeah, and they look if good. they if they don't they have Dylan good. Gabriel today, they lose to Kansas. So they would have completed the old uh, Kansas shutout there if they wouldn't have, if they would have lost to KU. Oh yeah, I mean if they're starting General Booty or doing Wildcat formations, they're not going to win that game. But they had Dylan Gabriel, and I think he made the difference for them. So I I, I think people are undervaluing the K State win against Oklahoma because. Dylan Gabriel hasn't played the rest of the the games for them until today. And so people are starting to undervalue that win for K state specifically. And you look at, you look at the game against uh, for Iowa state against Texas today too. And it was just a, it was like, it was a rock fight. It was a slobber knocker type of game. Both teams were at full strength, like a 10 to nine win over Iowa state. I think, you know, I'm I'm a homer, but I think the cats are being undervalued. I think across the board right now. Well, and the t- the two lane loss does not look that bad, to be honest with you. I mean, it's seventeen no, it to ten, doesn't. and two lane has been absolutely putting it on people the last couple of weeks. You know, they beat Houston at Houston, and then they beat East Carolina in South Florida at South Florida decisively this week. So I think a two lane loss. I don't think you can read too much into the two lane loss because that's a pretty daggum good football team. And hey, six and, and hey, one in the American. Lest we forget, Houston was Kansas's biggest win. Fact. That's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> Denver, West Virginia. Um, a couple things. First off, love the emoji reactions from all the K State fans, and glad y'all are here on Gaucho's After Dark, sponsored by Barnett, Howard, and Williams. I wish there was a wheat emoji reaction that y'all could be hammering right now, but there's not. Um, Mr. Trollsby, where would you, if you were an odds maker, where would you set the line for K-State at TCU next weekend? Uh, you're putting me on the spot. I don't really know. I had to guess I would say TCU's, TCU's at home. I'm going to say they're probably going to be favored three and a half or four. Okay. I think that's – somewhat in line with what the rest of us thought. Um, I had TCU minus six and a half is where I think it'll open. Um, Special teams U, another K-State fan, uh, CU requested as a speaker. Who do you think is the best team in the Big 12, worst team in the Big 12, and then any other comments, questions you've got for us? Uh, Currently, I think the best team in the Big 12 is in absolute tie. I know that's a lame answer, but I think it's a tie right now between uh, TCU and Kansas State. And obviously, I have purple-tinted glasses on. So, But um, Oklahoma State couldn't finish today, and they were up big, and that'll, that'll do it in the Big 12 with how wide open it is. But I'll tell you right now, what a day of football. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I had a blast watching football day. I love college football. I mean, this Utah game was excellent. 
<laughs> I mean, Stanford beating Notre Dame was excellent. Like, what a, in the Big 12 has to be one of the most entertaining conferences to watch. I mean, every game this week was excellent. But, um, sorry to go on a tangent, but, um, the worst team in the Big 12 is probably Iowa State. I mean, just has to be. Uh, of course, Kansas the Farmageddon got, guys okay. saying Iowa State. Well, my point being is that <laughs> let's look at the tail of the tape. Oklahoma beat Kansas, so they're no longer at the bottom because they beat a team that's beat Iowa State and they beat um, West Virginia. Uh, so who has Iowa State beaten? A- absolutely nobody. They are they have not won a single game in Big Twelve play. So I agree. I agree. Me. I was just messing with you. Oh, okay. I thought I didn't look at my phone. I thought no, I was no, Iowa, State. I, uh, Iowa State is happy they get a bye week next week. They're that's, <laughs> they're, poor, they're really happy guys. they're getting a bye week this next week. What is it? Four losses by between fourteen points total. That's yeah, yeah. and, and that's, that's tough. Nebraska numbers. And in the Big Twelve this week, you only had one game that was decided by more than one score, and that was Oklahoma and Kansas, and that was still a close game. So you're talking about three three point games. And one 10-pointer, and that was the Big 12 for you this week. So to your point, yeah, the Big 12 has been fun to watch all year. This weekend was even just as good. I mean, I, I'm, I just – I can't imagine anyone sitting down and being like – besides that Tennessee-Alabama game, I mean, every Big 12 game this year, like it's not – it's not SEC where it's like Georgia and Alabama or Georgia and Tennessee are going to end up in the in the conference championship. Like you don't know. No one knows right now who's going to end up in the Big Twelve championship because K State could go in. I'm saying could, and I'm knocking on wood, go into TCU and win this week next weekend, and then it's I mean it's wide open. If TCU wins, then yes, they're kind of clinched. But it's just it's such a fun conference to watch. But that's that's all I had to say. Thanks, guys. I think similarly to whoever won the Oklahoma State TCU game was in the driver's seat today. I think whoever wins that one next week between the purple teams is definitely in the driver's seat. Uh, M. Carroll, best team, worst team, and whatever else you have, man. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh, I just want to embrace the debate about maybe Baylor being the worst team in the Big 12. I know that that's a little bit of a hot take. I'm not saying I stand behind it, but I ju- I do think like Big 12 is a little bit of a dog fight this year. We're talking about the top end of the Big 12, but I think bottom end like Iowa State, Baylor might be the bottom end. I mean, I mean, shit, we might be in that conversation too as Texas Tech, but I think Baylor might be the worst team. I, I have a question. I, I have a question. Did Neil Brown outcoach Dave Aranda? Yes or no? Absolutely. Are you in the club, Absolutely. by the way? Yeah, just just a Hell little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a couple beers deep, guys. I, I was thinking about that. I was like, whoa, West Virginia, I thought was definitely the bottom dweller. Beat beats Baylor by three points. They were down by how many scores? Comes back, wins it. Like, I think the bottom is up for discussion. So I I don't hate where you're going with that, and I will embrace the debate here. But as long as Baylor has a road win against a conference opponent, and Iowa State has no win against a conference opponent, I can't quite get all the way there. Is that fair? That's fair. At the end of the end of the season, do you think they're going to be even with conference wins? I hmm, – that's a good question. Baylor still has Texas, TCU, and uh, Kansas State. So they come to Lubbock – I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, Baylor Baylor could finish with two or three conference wins, and Iowa State could finish with two or three conference wins. Right. So I think I think the bottom dweller is up for discussion, and I think it might be Baylor. They just look a little suspect to me. Yeah, I mean, Sus. and with with Kansas, with Kansas already having two conference wins, I don't know if it'll actually be totally settled until the last weekend of the season, and that's just that just speaks more to the competitiveness of the conference, top to bottom. That we might not know who the best team and the worst team is in this conference until the very end. And that's not something that a lot of other conferences can say. Yeah, no, no one in the Big 12 wants to play each other. That's a fact. Uh, but just wanted to throw that out there as a uh, food for thought. But I am like hopping between spots right now. I wanted to say what's up to you guys. Uh, have a good evening, everybody. You, you too, man. Is that bass nectar in the <laughs> right. background I hear? <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> All right. thanks, uh, thanks for jumping in, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, y'all have a good one. Bye. Uh, Michael. Pretty sure it was George yeah. Strait. Oh, is that what it was? Oh, it'll be 20-something again, right, boys? <laughs> <laughs> I was absolutely face pumping over George here. George Strait, same thing. I don't, I don't think my mother-in-law is going to like this episode with all the all the uh, four-letter words that have been <laughs> shouted so far. Yeah, guys, this is a family show, by the way. I know it's Gaucho's After Dark. But... <laughs> if you go Bass Nectar and George Strait, that's about as family show as it gets right there, boys. That's That's yeah. good content. We'll have to have Rob edit a couple uh, bleeps in into this episode, but that's all right. I'll be hot on the trigger. All right, William, what's up, man? Best team, worst team, and uh, whatever else you have. Hey, uh, yeah. So I, you know, I heard about making it family friendly. So um, I'll give you my best team and worst team, and and I think you'll guess it after this. But I think we should have a nice old Big Twelve bake sale. So that we can help those Iowa State fans pay for an extension for Matt Campbell. I think he needs to stay in Ames as long as they can hold on to him. I'm loving it. So you can kind of guess who my worst team is right now, just based on results. And then best team, uh, we're going to find next week. After that win, since we have a bye week, TCU's got the body of work. But next week, we'll determine it. Hey, I mean, for all of of Iowa State struggles, are they still at least – very together as a team, even if it's not showing up in the wind column? I think they're the second most together team. Uh, you know, we obviously saw the most together team in college football history, but this has got to be maybe the second most. And you might be right, so we'll see if they can get it turned around. But, yeah, I think uh, – I know my co-host Rob has this take that Matt Campbell stayed too long, and if you wanted to parlay the success at Iowa State into an NFL gig or a Blue Blood gig that – that window has closed and maybe he's totally content. And he wants to be at Iowa state for 20 years, but if he wanted out, I think he's got a lot fewer options today than he had 18 months ago. Yeah. He Seth Luttrell himself. Yes. Out. Exactly. That's a great analogy, Rob. By the way, Kansas state ch- uh, fans hit me some emojis that you didn't get Seth Luttrell because he wanted to cancel uh, Bill Snyder's son. And instead you got climbing. Luckiest coaching hire of uh, that go around, uh, Mister Root. You got back in. Did you have another comment that you wanted to give? Uh, yeah, two things. I want to say that I wish Dave Veranda had like an ounce of personality. He just seems like a total freaking robot, and that for that reason, I can't like him. And it, it's not just because he's at Baylor, but he doesn't look like he has fun. And I like a football coach that seems like they have fun. And he just doesn't. But well, the other thing is, like, it was a circling back to one of whoever the hell it was. <laughs> that this was a great Saturday for college football. There were two century records that that went down today. One, oh, shut up. Sorry, everyone. That was totally my bad. <laughs> I uh, I don't know what. Mr. Root. Wait, hold on. Did Mr. Yeah. Did, 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 was that a sheep? That, Damn it, that, Kyle. What was that Sorry, noise man. that happened? Was that a sheep? What? I thought I heard a sheep ball or something, and then <laughs> Mr. Root told somebody to shut up, and then the stream ended. What happened? No, one of my stupid cats was meowing. Oh, at it was me a cat. For whatever reason. I thought it was a yeah. sheep. I didn't know what was. I thought I you was, were talking about Iowa State over there and talking about sheep. I no, that would be him. I was flipping over to one of my burners. And they were on by today. It ended the space. Uh, but we are back. We are so back. Sorry, everyone. Hell yeah. Um, okay, Mr. Root, I interrupted you midstream. Okay, what were you? So, I'm pretty sure I got my point that Dave, Dave Aranda is super boring and I just can't like him. Be- He's a robot and shows no emotion. It's like, you bald-headed freak. Smile for once. Come on, man. But the other thing that I was, uh, and I don't know if it cut off before that, that there were two century like records that went down today. And one of them was Alabama. That was the most points that they have ever given. They have given up since like 1907 to Suwanee, who's probably like a D3 school right now. And then that was the first time that 
uh, Utah has beaten USC back to back since 1915. So that it was just a great, great Saturday for college football. You know, I wonder if we're looking at that at a little bit different light and because the, the other guy who mentioned it was a K-State fan. And our our beloved teams are on bye weeks this week. So we get to just kind of enjoy. We just kind of get to show up to the cookout and we don't have to cook anything or bring anything. We just get to eat. So I, I'm, I wonder if that's kind of shading it a little bit. But, man, yeah, the Big 12 has just been a lot of fun this year. And it's just kind of, to me, it's showing what it will be in the future. Uh, you know, once the, the new team, there's – the new teams come in and the, the old teams leave. Uh, I think it's going to be just competitive across the board, but I do wonder if I would be thinking uh, that highly of today's football. If, you know, tech had lost a close one by a field goal or, or, you know, if, if K state had lost one or something, we might, we might be a little bit less, uh, you know, rosy. Well, yeah, Spencer's maybe gotta so, be but pretty we were ups- definitely feasting on the bye week. Spencer's got to be pretty upset that uh, Mike Leach lost today. <laughs> I am over the moon. That dude can lose out the rest of his life. I couldn't care less. But go Rocky Top, everybody. Rocky Top, Tennessee. Hey, uh, Steven Stevens, you got a, a two-name combo there. Is that Rahino Barbecue in your uh, profile picture? No, that is never made. Uh, last trip up. All right. Still looks good. Yeah, my daughter drugged me there, and it was good. Rihanna is on one of my next trips up, so <laughs> we're good. All right, good. Uh, I have to agree. This is the most fun bye week I can remember in a long time. It's just been a great day of college ball all the way around. So uh, I think I have to agree. It's K-State and TCUs for the taking after this week. Bottom, I'll say Iowa State still. And I think we'll go five and one over the next six. There you go. That's my hot take. That's uh, eight. And so, does everyone finish. has has everyone just written off Oklahoma State because they lost a game they were an underdog in on the road? I, I haven't. I just think they're middle tier now. I think they've still got a chance to. I mean, they could possibly win out. Um, I I really think they'll win Bedlam this year. Um, but yeah, they've got they've still got UT on the schedule, of course. Kansas State, Kansas, Iowa State. OU and West Virginia. I mean, I don't know about winning out. That's probably kind of a bold statement, but I think they're still in the driver's seat. Hey, if Texas Tech goes five and one the rest of the way, I'll uh, take whoever wants to go to Rahenio Barbecue and Olton, and I'll pay for it if we go five and one the rest of the way. Deal. This is being recorded, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah please uh, edit that out too, bro. If we go five and one, just edit that out. All right, I'll uh, be sure to remember that when we go five and one and we're eating barbecue at Rahino. I've got a copy too, by the way. Fair that enough. Five, Fair enough. That five and one. Spencer, Spencer won't let me forget that. Nope. What's, what's the one loss? Is that Kansas, Carson? Would that be our one loss? If it's Kansas, then we ain't going five and one. I mean, I think Kansas is a much improved football team, but yeah, if it's Kansas, you ain't going five and one. <laughs> And we got this uh, comment on the Twitch or Twitch stream, the Twitter stream. Uh, Alabama's undisciplined. Thoughts? It has has Saban lost his fastball? <laughs> they lost the game. Oh, they had eighteen penalties, right? Lost. How many He's penalties lost. did they have? Oh yeah. Okay. Let me look into that. I, they, I think they had like 16 or 17 penalties, something crazy like that. The lack of discipline. Uh, one could view it that way, that's for sure. When, uh, I think it's just the Josh Heupel effect. <laughs> he causes you to have penalties? Yeah. yeah ask yeah. all those teams that lost to him when he was a mediocre quarterback at Oklahoma. Did, did you want to do his birthday's Halloween. He'll be 71. Of course, he was born on Halloween. He, um, that just happy early birthday. Him and his yeah. family turn off the lights and have dinner upstairs on Halloween because he hates kids. Did you know that? 
You're lying. That's a lie. No, it, it's true that they have dinner upstairs, but it's just because it's his birthday and they don't want to be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> but they do turn the lights off and don't go to the t- trick-or-treaters. No front porch lights in the on the Saban house. Can you even get to his house if you're trick-or-treating, though? Isn't it like back in a, on a lake or something? I have no idea. Yeah, I'm sure it's not a heavily trafficked pedestrian area. Just a lot of people walking their dogs. I think he lived, didn't, wasn't he raised in UK during the Blitz? So he, he might remember all the lights off stuff. I think he's, I think he's accustomed what? to that. <laughs> that is some history what? lesson right there that nobody else knows, Brian Michael. Nobody else has a Wait, clue no, what you're talking about. He grew up was, in the it UK. It was totally just an age joke. It was an age joke. And I'm, oh, I'm like 10 years, I was very 10 years confused. off anyway. Very confused. Uh, Kyle, this thing's going off the rails, man. Do you have any, uh, five, five final thoughts or questions that you want to ask to people i've just been scrolling through don williams's timeline reading <laughs> ap top 25 discourse um so yeah that's why i was a little bit zoned out there dude that that guy waits for the perfect opportunity and will remember everything <laughs> and has screenshots and actually he probably has the old boomer screenshots where he just took pictures of the screen of the computer and then he'll tweet those out later it's beautiful He's getting hammered yeah, those, right now on Twitter. Those are almost more devastating. He is the hammer, even though Joe Klatt ratioed the hell out of him, and it was kind of funny. Who do you think would win in the fight, Joel Klatt or Don Williams? Don Williams. I'm taking Dirty Don. Don. I think he always travels with a steak knife. The Tulio Rose would definitely win. Well, that seems like as good a point as any to bring this puppy home, don't you think, Rob? Uh, yes, I think so. Michael, Spencer, any any final thoughts from the 23 personnel standpoint? Uh, I, I would just, just continue the point that we were making there at the end of the, the radio show this morning is that Texas Tech does not lose at home this year, uh, going back to basketball. So we're going to continue that trend. I think Texas Tech wins out at home this season. Uh, and in two sports. So to do that, you need to, to finish off the last four games at home. Uh, so let's uh, let's start with that this weekend. I'm, I'm still a little bit skeptical on Kansas State, despite how well Martinez played uh, against OU and against Tech, of course. So I'm, I'm really going to be keeping an eye on what, the, what that game does in TCU. And I still think Oklahoma State's going to be a contender at the end of this season but it it's going to be a wild ride i'm enjoying it thanks for having us on guys uh and we'll we'll talk to y'all later yeah appreciate y'all joining appreciate everybody from every big 12 fan base we had folks from iowa state kansas state um all chime in it's great to hear from y'all at the end of every college football weekend and would love to have y'all's participation moving forward one final shout out to our sponsors barnett howard and williams they do family law, criminal defense, personal injury, um, certified Title IX. So bhwlawfirm.com, three Texas Tech grads, so you know you're dealing with smart people there. And we will talk to you all next week. Thanks. Love you all.